This is a 20 year old compact office PC, which in a recent video I tried to do some gaming on, an experience that didn't feel much more advanced than gaming on a Tamagotchi. So for today's video, I'm gonna try and turn this into like a budget sleeper build using an AMD Ryzen 5300G APU. Now the problem with the 5300G APU is that unfortunately you can't really buy them from a shop at the moment for some reason. You can only get them by going onto eBay and doing some sewer croc wrestling. And if you go onto eBay looking for sewer crocs to wrestle in order to get a 5300G, you'll see that the prices are at about $280 for an engineering sample of that. That unit but then i found what looked like a deal that may be too good to be true there was a seller that was selling an entire hp pavilion with a 5300g in it for not much more money than just the engineering samples on their own which immediately got me really excited because you know if somebody on ebay is going just give me an extra 30 bucks and I'll throw in an entire PC that there's probably something dodgy going on there. So I ordered it, expecting it to come in maybe a week, considering that the seller was based in the United States. Well, apparently the seller just strapped the box to the back of a llama and kind of sent it on its way because it took over a month to get here. But it's finally here, so let's open the box, see what we actually got, and then see if we can turn this PC into a sleeper using those parts. But before we get into that, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor that helped pay for the llama journey. Whoa, finally get to trim the man jungle. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped, who offered the best tools and solutions for the three big odor areas. Mm. Manscaped just launched the new Lawn Mower 4.0 waterproof electric trimmer that you can get in their new Performance Package 4.0 bundle. The Lawn Mower 4.0 has ceramic blades, which means you won't cut the jewels. The package also comes with the Crop Preserver, which you can apply quickly and protects you all day. If you want a midday refresh, the package also comes included with the Crop Reviver, which has a cooling aloe vera. With Manscaped, you can also get the Weed Whacker Nose Trimmer, which is real powerful. For a limited time you can get a free travel bag which is really nice and manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs go to manscaped.com today where you'll get 20 percent off two free gifts and free international shipping manscaped your balls and body will thank you Now when I first got the Llama Mail package, I was a bit worried because it is quite small for something that a PC is shipped in. However, if you drop an HP Pavilion on there, you can see that, yeah, there's conceivably one of those in there. Let's open it up and have a look. <laughs> yep, that's a PC, all right. Now having a look at the inside of the system that seems pretty much brand new, I think it's quite obvious what the seller was doing. They bought this little PC, took the graphics card out and presumably sold it on eBay for massive profit, and then they just sold this bit separately. I wonder how much money they made off this poor little system, but we're, we're gonna salvage it today and turn it into something a bit more interesting. And then the next thing that really stands out to me is, there's a pretty strong smell of fire coming from this system. Weirdly, it does smell like wood fire though. I wonder what this llama went through to get this PC to me. Let's have a closer look at the components and then see if it powers on. Okay, get that out the way so we can see a bit better. Now, as is often the case with HP, we do actually have dual channel RAM. I'm pretty sure this is eight gigs, but HP is really good with that. I, I, I like that. We also have a 256 gig NVMe SSD. Unfortunately, the motherboard is one of those weird proprietary shapes that actually has the front IO soldered to the motherboard. Uh, so I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to use this in the actual sleeper build, but we'll, we'll figure that out later. And then finally, the power supply is an 80 plus gold 400 watt unit. Again, a bit of a weird shape. CPU cooler wise, we've got one of our all time favorites. It's like a bastardized version of the Intel stock cooler. We've also got a SATA port right in the middle of the motherboard, which ergonomically is kind of like having the pedals on a bicycle behind the rider. So not a bad looking little system for $380 if it works. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. It's a good start. Hey, there we go, finally. That took worryingly long, but it's figured it out. Wow, from the looks of things, they, they never turn the system on. They literally just ripped the GPU straight out of it. 
Okay, this just seems like an HP PC. Um, wow, it's a lot of bloatware. Okay, so this is all functional. Let's shut it down and rip this PC apart. Wow, that just comes straight off like that, okay. This is the RGB light for the front that we've got here, so we can just kind of plug that out. That is a very complete front IO though. We've got four USB 3 ports and a little USB-C. Now that we have a clearer look at the motherboard, you can see that even the screw holes unfortunately don't really seem to correlate with ATX screw hole positions. Although, if enough of them do, we could potentially still transplant this HP motherboard into that old compact system. I don't know, like three should be enough to hold it securely enough for it to not be a complete disaster. Uh, the other problem that we have though is that all of the power connectors are also weird. So it means that if we do want to use this motherboard and not just take the CPU and the uh, the SSD out of here, we're also going to have to get this, uh, this HP power supply into that compact system. Which means that this sleeper may turn into a complete abomination, which is pretty exciting. Again, even with the power supply, we just need a couple of these holes to line up and then we should be okay. <laughs> Ugh, look at this weird, unnecessarily deformed little motherboard. Although, this power supply is 100% my biggest compatibility concern. Wait a minute. Having a look at this compact PC just made me realize, essentially what I'm doing here is taking a new HP pre-built and putting it into a 20-year-old HP pre-built case. So this comparison is a pretty good example of what 20 years of pre-built development looks like. So let, let's tear the compact down and see if we can make this stuff fit. Wow, having a look at the inside of this 20-year-old OEM pre-built, I can't help but feel like we've gone backwards. The form factor of all of the core components in here are still standard today. And the reason that we're potentially gonna have compatibility issues with this build isn't because of the 20-year-old PC, it's because of the new one. Whoa, <laughs> look at all these ribbon cables. I'm gonna keep these DVD, dri DVD drives in, but unfortunately they're not gonna be functioning because we don't have IDE. I do not miss ribbon cables, holy crap. See this, it's a standard plug. CPU power is a standard plug, be it in a really stupid place, but still standard. this awesome old motherboard. Hashtag standardized form factors are sexy. Okay, it is the moment of truth. We're gonna see if we can get enough holes to line up so that we can get only mounted in here. Uh, place your bets in the comment section now. I'm not optimistic, but let's see what happens. Ah, <sighs> unfortunately we can't get more than one hole aligned at a time, so yeah, this isn't gonna work. So I guess at this point our best bet is to just use the CPU and the SSD that we have, scrap the rest and use standard form factor parts. Very disappointed in you, HP. I can't even use the CPU cooler because it uses Intel mounting hardware on an AMD system for some reason. Look at that, look at how beautifully a standard MATX motherboard lines up in this case. If they could do it 20 years ago, why can't they do it now? But at this point, I guess we may as well trick this bad boy out a bit. So let's finish up the build and see how she runs. Why does this motherboard not have an integrated rear I.O. shield? Oh. 
Okay, we're starting off with the good old GTA 5. Now, I'm gonna start the tests with 720p, just all normal settings. I don't want to scare the little guy, you know, I want to ease the 5300G into the gaming situation. Let's see what happens when we go outside. Temperatures are spectacular. Okay, so we're, we're hovering around 80 frames per second here at 720p. So it, it feels really good, it's, it's pretty smooth and responsive, and... It, it doesn't look amazing, but it, it's running pretty well. And compared to the performance we were getting out of that 20-year-old APU, this is like hundreds of times better. Let's, let's move it up to 1080p and see what happens. Whoa, would you look at that? Going up to 1080p, we actually didn't lose as much frame rate as I was expecting. We're in the 70s now, occasionally going up to 80 frames per se- uh, uh, Oh. We just lost some map there, but it's fine. It's, it's, not, it's okay, we can just ignore that. Performance-wise, this is way better than I was expecting from this little APU. Maybe I was expecting too little from it, but yeah, good job, good job AMD. This is, this is running really well. Unfortunately for CSGO, we have to have the world's most pathetic little overlay, but we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, this is 1080p low settings, and it seems to be sitting at about 120 frames per second. It, it feels fine, actually. Honestly, this is this is very playable. CSGO often has an issue where even at higher frame rates, it still feels weird. But yeah, input lag is pretty much non-existent. And yeah, this feels pretty good. So it seems as though in terms of esports games at 1080p, kind of like low competitive settings, uh, the 5300G really seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, let, let's try Battlefield 5. Ooh, here, Battlefield 5 is running at 720p low settings, and again, this is much better than I was expecting. I, I should have given this APU more credit. Um, this is very playable, actually. Ah, ah, no. Whoa, this is, this is really crazy. I was not expecting Battlefield 5 to be playable with this APU. Um, it is 720p, so it's pr it's pretty blurry. It's not <laughs> it's not a beautiful gaming experience. After a couple more tests, I'll throw a dedicated GPU in here and see how much better of a gaming experience we have. Because that's one of the beauties with APUs, right? Is you can very easily upgrade. Uh, but before we do that, let's check out 1080p on a 5300G. Whoa. Okay. No, that that seems to be asking too much of it. The frame rate's actually not that bad but there's, there's definite input lag and it actually feels like you're gaming underwater a little bit. So this is not really usable if you want to actually be able to like kill other players and stuff. This is not what I'd call a recommended gaming experience. For the graphics card upgrade, I'm using this graphics card sent over by PowerColor, the RX 6600 XT Hellhound. Um, in terms of airflow and just kind of general breathing room for the graphics card, that does not seem like it's gonna go very well in there. So, yeah, let's, let's see what happens when we play some games with it. Here we are with Battlefield 5 running at 1080p high settings. This is with the, uh, Hellhound. And the temperatures are actually very good, despite the fact that it's just pushed up right on the bottom of the case. In terms of frame rate, it's been a huge improvement over the iGPU, but obviously it would be. The 5300G is kind of struggling to keep up with that 6600 XT, but the frame rate's really good. Like it's doing better than I was expecting. That little APU has definitely impressed me with, with its performance here. Although I think we would definitely get a better frame rate if we, if we had a better CPU in here. So if you are in the market for an APU while you wait for graphics card prices to drop, I'd maybe try and aim for something like a 5600G just so that you have better CPU performance to, to match with whatever graphics card you're getting. I think these old sleeper builds are awesome because I'd always like to imagine that if somebody were to burgle your house, they wouldn't even steal the system. They just look at it and be like, that's definitely not even worth the effort of carrying it outside. But little do they know, there's an awesome little PC in there. Uh, on the note of that PC, the 5300G is actually way better than I was expecting. And it's really a shame that you can't buy them new. You can only kind of like harvest them out of discarded GPU vessel pre-builds sold on eBay. Um, it's also a shame that we couldn't use more of that discarded GPU vessel. But now that we have a bunch of non-proprietary stuff in here, it is a lot more 
more upgradable. So that's awesome. And I guess the moral of this video is if you're a burglar, steal old PCs as well, I guess. Uh, which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thank you very much to all of the Patreons. There's actually been a bunch more of you lately and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Until the next video, bye-bye.